I don't know if I got those moves. Yeah. That's what a hundred thousand dollar bridge looks like. Oh, oh, this looks hard. Here we go. Is that a metal barrel? Yeah. Oh boy. Yeah, it's been I've been fortunate to kind of experience almost the whole the whole history li timeline of mountain biking so far. But I was there when the boom started. You know, I was there before the boom, and it was really exciting to be into mountain biking in the late '80s. Welcome everybody. Thank you guys for tuning in. We've got a pretty fun interview today. We're currently sweating our faces off in Bentonville, Arkansas. Um, we're here for the bike fest and. Um, Hans Ray was uh, kind enough to invite us out. There's a new, I don't want to call it the impossible hill climb trail, but it's supposedly one of the hardest trail climbs, definitely, I'd say, in Arkansas. Yeah. And uh, we came out to try it and thought we'd sit down for a little bit of an interview. Hans obviously has been around the mountain bike scene for a long time. When I was uh, just a little teenage grum, I had some posters of you up on the wall. <laughs> um, so it's rad to be able to you know, ride together and, and have some fun. So over the years of riding, um, you know, going from trials extraordinaire to where you are now, what has that been like? That, that's quite a ride. Yeah, it's been, I've been fortunate to kind of experience almost the whole the whole history like, timeline of mountain biking so far. I mean, obviously I wasn't there at the beginning when the clunkers, but I was there when the boom started. You know, I was there before the boom and it was really exciting to be into mountain biking in the late 80s mm -hmm. when I came to America. And with that, you not only ex experienced the sport explode, but technology exploded along the way over the last 30 years. And then in the last 15 years, it became a little bit less about the technology, but more about how and where we ride trails, purpose-built trails, right. places like here. And it's been kind of cool. And now, uh, last but not least, um, the e-bikes, I think, just came at the right time. You know, it's a really great uh, way to mix it up. And, you know, and the trail you just mentioned, it's called Zone 4. It's pretty new. And I think it was meant to be for regular bikes. So maybe it's a little bit easier on e-bikes, but I don't think it's going to be easy by any means. No, the, from what we saw so far, it looks like it's going to be a, a, a technical and fun challenge. Obviously, riding style has changed with equipment over the years. I see that you're riding in two different pairs of shoes. Let's <laughs> talk about that for us. I do that sometimes. I call it halfway ray, and I literally have a clipped shoe on my leading foot and a, a flat pedal and a flat shoe, softer shoe, on my rear foot. And I figured for the super gnarly stuff, like in Laguna, mm -hmm. I don't want to be clicked in for the super steep downhills, but I also, I do want to be clicked in for the uphills, because on uphills, when you're clipped in, you do have an advantage. But, and I tried it out once, and I realized, wow, if you do one and one, you have kind of the best of both worlds. So for that style of riding, and for an uphill trail like today, um, I figured I'd bring this setup because um, it really helps climbing and you don't slip a pedal and if you have to dab you can keep pedaling with that leading foot while the while the rear foot that's not clipped in is usually the foot that 65 to 70 percent of your dab are with the rear foot right so it all makes sense and um, anyway and then and maybe it, it would be also something for beginners, people who never tried clip pedals and they're timid. Mm -hmm. I think it's a lot better just trying it with one than having those pedals where you have to find the right side and you have to always look down, you know, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Interesting. Well, I, might, I, I can definitely see where there could be some merit to it, uh, having that little bit of confidence on some of the really hard climbs. I know I love trying to find real steep technical like ledges and being able to have one foot, you know, safe and unclipped is a little bit of peace of mind. Well, and also to keep your momentum going because it's really easy to slip a pedal when yeah. it's so rocky. Oh yeah, and for the sure. The key is to keep to keep the momentum going. Wow. So keep your momentum going. Because you can't. I don't think you can put your wheel into it, right? It's hard to get going. You get stuck then. This is where the clipping in, but I want to be flat for bailing. Do you want to try it? Or? Yeah. All right. Here we go. I was hoping to get over 
but then even still, dude, that is crazy. So when you were doing trial shows and and competing, right, even before that, in were you guys, were you clipping in for those as well? No, ne never. For trials, never. Okay. And still not. I mean, I just do it for these uphill things okay. on the e-bike because I really love those technical uphills and you can really push yourself. And I remember once I I tried a staircase, a pretty steep, long staircase, like probably like 25 steps, you know, by my house. And it took me 20 or at least 10 tries on flat pedals and mm -hmm. I finally made it. And... And then I figured, you know what, let me go home real quick and put clip pedals on and see if it makes a difference. Mm -hmm. And with the clip pedals, it was way easier. I made it the first three times I made it on, with the clip pedals up. And so then I, when I, but then I was like, ah, but I don't want to be clipped in all the time, especially in Laguna. So then I, like I said earlier, I, I tried it out with just one and it was like, whoa, huh. that works. Impressive, right on. Um, so, Obviously, today we're on e-bikes. You still do quite a lot of traditional bike riding. Do you do much trials riding anymore these days? I try to. I do less and less. You know, it gets hard with age. You know, like it's it's a really physical demanding sport. Nowadays, when I ride, I ride for forty five minutes, and I'm I'm gassed. And then, like I don't know, when we were kids, you know, we would train like six hours a day, and it sh it shows you how demanding it is. And it's it's really cool here because at the festival. There is a top-notch uh, trials competition with the top European guys, and the level of trials riding these days is unbelievable. What these guys do, I really, I haven't seen a competition at this level in at least ten years. Wow! And I really look forward to see uh, what they got. So, but yeah, I, I try to ride a little bit myself still, but um, you know, once a week if that. Yeah, you know, I remember racing. I used to race the downhill, like the Amateur Cup Series and like the Bud Light Am Cups at Snow Summit. And sometimes oh, they would, mania. yes, and they would interlap every with like a World Cup downhill. And I remember there was a Snow Summit World Cup, and they had a trials expo right there by the slalom race, and watching you know you kind of perform like, or they had the trials comp right there, right? So those competitions back then on the bikes that you were riding, right? The technology, the brakes, all that compared to what's going on today, roughly. Uh, would you say they're equally gnarly or would you say the courses today are gnarlier but the bikes are more capable or was the old stuff way more sketchy because you never know what was going to break? The sport has just evolved and the, the bikes had weird geometries and the, nowadays the, the guys do everything on the back wheel so the bike has a really weird geometry to normal pedal it but when you're on your back wheel it feels really comfortable. Yeah. And the, but the moves these guys do, these are really top-notch athletes. They yeah. are, they train so hard and they're so good. And what they do on a daily basis, I mean, the, the way Explosive. jumping up and gaps and risk and little, you know, like it's, it's pretty amazing. It's, it's hard to say. I mean, I, I, I'm glad I competed when I did it. <laughs> and nowadays it's a, it's a, Another level. To, yeah, it's another level. And it's, it, it, I wish there would be a, another form of trials that's a bit more friendly to the masses so people okay. can try it out. And I hope maybe that's just something with e-bikes, you know, because e-bikes, you know, like where you can pedal over stuff. Not, I'm not talking about hopping on an e-bike, but yeah. riding up technical stuff like we're going to do today, I think is, is super fun be cool. on the e-bike. Yeah. Like have like slow, tight. I mean, even if they just had tape on grass, you could get some very slow, tight maneuvers as like you're kind of base level entry point right and exactly. then you start introducing small features exactly that could be cool. and then make the scoring very simple i actually came up with the concept i call it skills and i i i always want to do a test event and invite the top the top trials guys the top enduro guys the top free riders the top motorcycle trials guy bring them all together in a fun event and see what what discipline has maybe the edge and um and i just need to sit down and do it. I got kind of got thrown back with the pandemic, but maybe it's time to bust out an event like that. That could be cool. And I know you're doing lots of fun projects, right? With your urban travel series. What, tell us about some of those features. Yeah, I mean, I've been doing adventures all over the world for the last more than 25 years. And, um, and I, initially I used to go to all the far flung corners of the globe and places where nobody had ridden before, or places that were considered unrideable. And there's not many, you know, spots left on the map that nobody has done and, and I've done it all. And 
or I done a lot of it, but I all of a sudden found pleasure in these going to urban cities. And there's a, a few or a couple dozen really big cities in the world mm. that have also really incredible nature left and right and even in the middle. Yeah. And we're trying to do usually a five day traverse on bikes. We usually mix it up between normal mountain bikes and e-bikes. And it's the best way to experience these cities, not only to see the different neighborhoods and the, the landmarks and get to know, see the people, but the riding can be unbelievable. You're all of a sudden in a neighborhood and you, you pop onto a sweet single trail and you pop up in the next neighborhood. And I've done, I've done the first one we did in Los Angeles and then we did the Transnapoli in Naples. We did the Hong Kong. Then last year I did Slay the Bay in San Francisco and I just got back from Mexico City. Yeah. We did Critty in Mexico City and Rob Water yeah. was along and that was, what a city, 22 million people. It's all about the contrast between yeah. nature and harmony and urban jungle and traffic and chaos and, and rich and poor and, and it's, it's all about these contrasts and like I said, the bike is the perfect way to see, see it. See it all, absolutely. What's been your favorite place? It's hard to say, they all been good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah everyone's they, got their own flavor. Yeah, and they, we, we make films out of them. They all like on my YouTube channel, but they also get televised all over the world and they're on streaming platforms. And, and that's kind of how I've been kind of, you know, generating a lot of exposure for the sponsors and stoke people out and inspire people. And there's often people tell me, man, I lived all my life in LA and I had no idea that certain neighborhoods that you hit up even existed, yeah, you know, or trails. Yeah. So that's kind of nice to hear. That's awesome, man. Well, appreciate you taking a few and, and chatting with us and uh, looking forward to seeing uh, how you school us on this climb today. And we'll, uh, if you haven't watched that video yet, we will link it down below. We will also link Hans's channel so you can check out some of his Urban Escape series. Thank you guys very much for watching and uh, let's go see if we can climb this thing. Let's do it. All right. <laughs>